one of the world's biggest and most famous clubs, the visitors to Ewell Park for this prestige pre-season friendly, which comes six days ahead of Rovers' return to the old singing or dancing world of the Premiership. But despite a loss to Tanana on Tuesday night, manager Graham Sinest seems pleased with pre-season to date. Injuries to Alan Marne, Damien Johnson proved not to be long-standing problems, and Matt Janssen's shoulder injury has cleared up. Stuart Metcalf, good to have you back again. This as far as pre-season games go is as prestigious as they come oh this is a fantastic uh, atmosphere this afternoon and i mean everybody will come down to watch barcelona today he's got some brilliant players and i just would like to welcome the three new players that rovers have signed today as well when the rain has eased it has poured down in lancashire since about uh, lunchtime yesterday non-stop so barcelona kick off referee mark holsey gets us underway and Barcelona in those famous shirts will kick towards the Blackburn end in the first half. And Barcelona tend to play with wing backs. We'll see if that's the case this afternoon. This is Reisiger picking it up down the Barcelona left. And Rovers with 1 to 11 this afternoon. I'll recap on the Rovers side as we uh, go through this first half and who at Saka's on the bench. Dunn in midfield, David Dunn with a signing of two guys not played every pre-season game. There's going to be competition for places there. Keith Gillespie down the right-hand side taking on Reisiger, still holds it and wins what will be the first corner of the afternoon. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting tussle between Gillespie and Reisinger. Both very quick players and it's nice to see Gillespie taking him on early on. Ball played in, that comes off the head of Luis Enrique eventually and comfortable for Bonanno in the Barcelona goal. Well, Barcelona are dangerous on these quick breaks and Damien Duff it is who will be penalised by uh, referee Mr Holsey for pulling back there. And Barcelona have a free kick. Taken by Patrick Anderson, headed back out again. Now a touch for Hernandez. Back it goes, back towards halfway. The roll, ball rolled back towards Anderson once more. This is Reisiger down the Barcelona left-hand side. Again, Patrick Anderson very much the organiser at the back for Barcelona. Touch for Anderson once more. Rovers holding their ground at the moment. Combination of Grabby and uh, Blake up front. Touch again that the referee is not happy with by Stig Bjornaby. And Gary Flickcroft going in there as well. It's a free kick to Barcelona on the far side. It's rain pours down once more. Reisiger down the Barcelona left. Patrick Clivert who scored twice in the game at Derby on Friday. In that 3-0 victory. Part of Barcelona's pre-season tour to England. Luis Enrique picks it up. Crowded out though by Stig Bjornaby and Damien Duff. Duff back helping out the defence. And Brad Friedel who starts the game this afternoon kicks long now chase on for Blake outstretched foot of Anderson on the edge of the penalty area yeah they look very uh, calm at the back bunch now they like passing the ball about they won't be in any hurry this game this game they'll just try as a training exercise make sure you don't get any injuries but Rovers fans have to be patient because uh, the European teams play a lot different than what we do and I know the boss and the keeper with another touch Clivert and Overmars coming in from the left hand side really are the two front players for Barcelona this afternoon and we'll see how competitive this game is Barcelona's pride would suggest that they will take the game seriously but I'm sure neither side wants to pick up injuries with the new season so close Curtis the pass really forced him to go backwards now with Henningberg Rivers have, of course, new squad members this season, but just to confuse matters further, they're playing 1-11 to today, so two guys, number four, taking over from Jason McAteer as number four, 
not playing today. Gary Flickcroft wears number four this afternoon. Rovers with Friedel in goal, Curtis Bjornaby, Flickcroft, Short, Berg, Gillespie, Dern, Blake, Gravy and Duff starting lineup. But I'm sure there'll be many changes as uh, Rovers have seven players on the bench. Koku with a touch in the Barcelona midfield. Played into Hernandez. But again, it's all pretty stuff from Barcelona. So far, no own product. Rovers Rob, though. Played through looking for Giovanni to make a run through the middle. Luis Enrique in there as well. Now here's Hernandez again in midfield. That's the support down the right hand side. Clive helps it on, looking for the re return ball. Cries of handball from the Blackburn end. Play goes on. And once more, Damien Duff very, very deep. Ball is the ball clear. Blake tussling upfield and Barcelona looking for the free kick. Goes to Rovers. Taken quickly. Here's David Dunn now. And as the ball's played back in by Gravity, flags already gone up for offside. And the referee plays a good advantage. Here's Clybert. We've been playing for six minutes. It's nil nil here at Ewood. Luis Enrique again, very much the playmaker in Barcelona's midfield. Both teams, it's glad to say, trying to play a passing game. What should be a very slick surface, Stuart, because it's, as I say, it's poured down non stop. Yeah, the, the, the players will enjoy the pitch, which is a bit of, bit of zip about, and, and players love that with the ball flashing about. Here's Reisker again, he's got Overmars outside him down the Barcelona left. Comes back inside on his right foot, crossfield ball, looking for that far side again. A patient build up once more from Barcelona. Here's Hernandez again in midfield. Barcelona keeping those three back at all times though. Overmars down the left, wants to take on Curtis, onto that left foot, gets the ball across towards Clivert, and Friedel, has he kept it out? I think he has yeah. on the line, well, the pace of Overmars did John Curtis down that right-hand side, the ball back, Clivert, Friedel came off his knee, bounced off the post, that's a big let off for Rovers. Meanwhile, upfield, Blake again, putting his weight about and doing a bit too much, but Big lead off that. Yeah, you see Overmars do it time and time again when he's played for Arsenal. He's so much pace over the first five yards and he just went past Curtis. Got a good cross in then. Uh, obviously, Rovers were lucky. It came back off the post. Seven minutes gone. First real chance of the game. And you would have thought, as Clivert played the shot through Berg's legs, he still just kept it on the line. Koku goes back to Patrick Anderson again. Patrick Anderson, Stuart, didn't have the best of times at Ewood. Well, I think he, when he came first first time to Ewood, he was a young, young, young lad and it was a big thing moving from Sweden and I don't think he adapted to the conditions at all. Told he'll play the first 45 minutes this afternoon. Barcelona have seven on the bench as well, so it should be fascinating second half, keeping track of who that's actually replacing who. Overmars causing problems again. It's been Noticeable, Stuart, that Keith Gillespie is really doubling up. Rovers are playing two on Overmars. Yeah, well, they'll have to do that because obviously if you can't leave Overmars one on one because he's got so much pace. Well, that was a very high challenge by Gary Flickcroft. He got away with it though. Luis Enrique again. Barcelona attacking at pace. Again, Duff back defending. Rovers wide men not have much chance to get forward so far. It's a nice ball in there, but not controlled by Luis Enrique. And so far, the two front players, almost like an away game, Stuart, Blake and uh, Grabby, have been left to forage on their own. Yeah, the Rovers midfield haven't started, started very well because Barcelona's had the majority of the players so far. We haven't seen David Dunn get into the game yet. Grab his ball back into the centre, comfortable for Anderson to clear. You play uh, Barcelona many times in pre-season, Stuart? <laughs> uh, it must be wonderful for Rovers players to play against a team like Barcelona. Yeah. Long ball play through, free to word it. I mean, the, the this area. like we're saying, most of the Barcelona players are all internationals, aren't they? We've seen them time and time again on TV. Play for nine minutes, it's 0-0 at... He would have mentioned Barcelona winning 3-0 at Derby on Friday night. Patrick Clybert with two goals, Giovanni got the other one. 
throw to Barcelona on the far side, which is their right. Anderson picks it up. I'm hopeless at estimating crowds, Stuart. We're told it will be about 20,000 or so in here. Yeah, I would have thought it would be about that, yeah. 19, 20,000. Now here's Anderson. Again, Overmars picks it up from deeper this time. Wants to play it early, but uh, his intended target, Luis Enrique, was offside. Instead, Barcelona spread play nicely down the right-hand side again. This is a really good test for Rovers on the eve of the new Premiership season. Koku again, and sorry, Hernandez again in midfield. Now Koku wearing number eight. Hernandez is the Barcelona number six. And this once more. And Reisiger again over Mars, again faced by Gillespie and Curtis. And Andes once more through the centre. Chipped ball in. Clivert's onside, gets the header in but couldn't control it. The flag stayed down. And I think Stuart Metcalf, that was the right decision. Yes, I don't think he was offside, Clive. A great ball from Hernandez there, and uh, really, Clive really should have hit the target from there. Stretching just to get enough on it. Uh, Friedel in the end, not called upon to make a save. Yeah, you just got to admire the way they play at Barcelona. They just knock the ball about until, until they get an opening. They, won't, they don't give the ball away until, until they have to. Curtis to Short. Schottenberg in central... Defence, do you think that's what Graham Sinest will want for his Premiership season? Will Schottenberg be first choices? Well, it would seem so. I mean, he, he has been talking of him trying to fetch another central defender in, but um, for the moment, I think that'll, that'll start with us next week. Here's Bjorn will be down the Rovers' left hand side. We played now 11 minutes in the first half. Game, I guess, not really got going so far, but. Uh, Say it's, it's quality wherever you look. Well, I think one or two are always playing, getting frustrated because uh, Barcelona are having more possession of the ball. People like David Dunn, you see, haven't got into the game so far. Yet. I think what Rovers will learn as well in the Premiership, and it's a lesson for some of the younger players, as uh, Gravy picks up edge of the area. Francis has shot on goal here, it looked like a handball. Referee's not going to give it though, yeah. and that will drift behind, I think, for a corner kick. That's Rovers look to take quickly. Duh. Gravy again, who's been lively early on. Francis another shot in, does he? Headed out. Back up towards halfway. Bjornaby picks it up. Difficult one for Short to control. Rovers forced back into their own half. I thought I was going to make is some of the Rovers' younger players in particular will have to get used to in the Premiership that Rovers will not dominate games no. like they did in right. Division 1. That's right, especially away from home. They're going to have to be a lot patient and they're going to have to start defending well the first 10 15 minutes. Here's Duff again. Sorts his feet out, goes round the outside, Grabby goes to ground, Duff goes over, wins Rovers the free kick, it's still pouring down here at Ewell Park. And I think uh, Damien Duff's okay down that far side. Challenge made by Gabriel Garcia de la Torre. His name we probably won't mention too often this afternoon, it's the Rovers free kick. Blake again is making a nuisance of himself. He's one of two Rovers players alongside Keith Gillespie who may miss games at the start of the season through suspension. We should know that in the next couple of days. In by Bjornaby, headed out by Anderson once more. Curtis slips the ball back to Berg on halfway. Rovers have options to play wide, looking towards Duff, who's drifted just a yard or so offside on the far side. Question, Mr. Metcalf, what is uh, Graham Sinesse's preferred forward partnership in the Premiership? Well, let's like say, I think it would start off if Matt Janssen were fit today, he would have been playing with Gravy, I would have thought. Um, but like people like Eisenstadt, I mean, they've got to prove themselves. I mean, I know he went on loan to City, but obviously still at Rovers, so people like him could still be in the frame. On the bench for this afternoon, Marcus Bent, who's uh, a name that hasn't been mentioned much, but still in the shake-up as well for places. John Filan, Craig Hingham, Mark Hughes. Of course, Barcelona connections there have been highlighted all week in the countdown to this game. Martin Taylor, Gordon Greer and Alan Marne. But they do need a big squad, Gary, because it is an hard season in the Premier League and they're playing good sides week in, week out. So they need a, they need a big, strong squad. The challenge for a top six place, you need two sides, don't you? Yes, the you equivalent do, yeah. of that. Yeah. Blake gets the ball back again from Gillespie. Chance to put the ball yeah. back in. Oh. And in the end, no one got a touch inside the penalty area. Gary Flickcroft. We might play a more forward role for Rovers this season. That's something else we could talk about. 
just couldn't connect. Here's Damien ball. Duffy, he's been Rovers best player so oh, far. Nothing. Full stretch, Bernardo gets hands on it. Anderson to clear for Barcelona, a chance for the visitors now to escape. And there's a Barcelona injury inside the penalty area, which will stop play. Yeah, great stuff from Rovers there. Great ball from Glaren Flipflop to uh, Damien Duff. And the goal did very well, stretching and got his hands to it. And the plate was right behind him. Was uh, Blake's ball in Stuart that yeah. caused the problem? Gary Flipkopp was very lucky in the post not to get a connection on it. Great ball from Nathan Blake there. Rovers really could have scored in the last five minutes. They've had a couple of good chances. We've heard a lot over the last um, year or 18 months. So we're just going to watch uh, Damien Duff's attack yeah, down great, that left hand great side. Great ball again. from Flickcroft there. And Damien Duff did the right thing. The goal did well, palmed it out there. There's been a lot of talk over the last uh, 12 or 18 months. Back Gary Flickcroft maybe turning himself into a defender yeah. from that defensive midfield role, and yet now we hear he's going to play an attacking midfield role. I would have thought he'd play an attacking role because he, he, can, he can get goals from midfield, and that's what Rovers will need this season. Berg at full stretch can't find another Rovers player. Handball by Gary Flickcroft wearing number four this afternoon. Especially at home, I think Gary Flickcroft will try and get forward away from home. He might have more of an holding role. So is it two from three midfield between two guy Dunn and Fleckcroft? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. yeah. I mean, the two guy, we haven't really seen him in, in the game this afternoon so far, but he is a very good player. Rovers step in again. Here's David Dunn, who's been relatively quiet so far. Running down a bit of a cul-de-sac. Cliver looked to play it early, but it's not quite the right ball, and Bjorn will be more tired yeah. You would think, correct me if I'm wrong, that, uh, barring injury worries, that Damien Duff and in his current form, Keith Gillespie will be automatic choices? I would have thought so, yeah. I think they'll start definitely be starting with Amazon next week. Yeah. So we're saying the side's almost picked there. Well, it is, but like you say, it's, football's a funny game. I mean, they can pick up an injury in training in midweek, and that's why they've got to have a good, strong squad. Comes off the head of Keith Gillespie, but Reisiger will clear. Barcelona pick it up again in midfield. Over Mars now, nice fancy footwork. Back inside to Hernandez. And he's really the ball carrier in that uh, Barcelona midfield. Yeah, I've been very impressed with number six, Hernandez. Yeah, he's very tidy on the ball. He's a great pass of the ball. Ball played into the area. And Barcelona, I think, will claim their first corner kick of the afternoon. Craig Short doesn't like the decision. But it's a Barcelona corner. Giovanni sliding inside the penalty area. And uh, Luis Enrique has been a bit of a handful as well. Barcelona's first corner then with 17 minutes gone. Strange one into oh. the near post, sliced totally by a gravy. And Kamara and Gluck is going to slice it into goal for a moment. Here's Overmars, he's one on one with Curtis this time. Wants to take him on, lays it back instead. And Andes with the shot scuffs around inside. Yeah, it must be a chance here. And it was a poor Rovers clearance that set it up on the plate, really. Is it Koku which going in? Looks like Philip Koku yeah. who's got the goal. Great left foot, you see. As soon as he goes, he just hit it, hit it nice and low to Brad Fiedel's right. It was unfortunate there because it was a missed kick in front of goal in the first place. Indeed, it was the Barcelona number eight, but Rovers with a chance to clear didn't mm. take it. No, it went straight to it. When we look at the replay again now, it comes straight to him, and people like him don't make mistakes from there. It's 18 minutes gone as uh, Barcelona take the lead. And it was a really good finish, wasn't it, as well? Oh, Friedel yeah, yeah super finish. Yeah. I think Craig Shorts is just having a little bit of arguments about the corner, what, which resulted in the goal. So Rovers nil, Barcelona one in this pre-season match, and here's Damien Duff down the Rovers left-hand side. Gravy and Blake ahead of him. Duff wanting to take it on himself. He's got three of those famous Barcelona shirts blocking his way. He's forced back, but maybe there's space now for Bjorn to be down the left-hand side. Broken the offside this time. Duff though is being held up at the moment. Now needs support once more from Stig Bjorn. He's wearing number three this afternoon. Flickcroft gets a touch. And now Flickcroft again pops up down the left hand side. Still in pouring rain here at Ewell Park. Played in by Bjornaby. He's got the best of his uh, balls in, but Dunn will pick it up. Gillespie takes it around Reisiger, puts the ball in at first time. It's a deep cross. It should be clear. Barcelona just put it out. I think one or two of their fans on the far side in the riverside. Holding a banner up there, Rovers have a throw. Yeah, good look, a bit of skill again from Gillespie there. He, he, I think he has the pace to beat Reisinger. If he can get the ball out to Gillespie a bit more, I think he can trouble him. 
And this forced all the way back to Freed on the edge of the area. This is a good test in another way as well. Quite often in the first division, teams needed, what, two or three chances to score. At this level, they don't. No, to get one chance at this level, they generally put it away. Bjornaby again, looking for Duff, playing on the last man back. And he was rather unfortunate there. It took a touch off the defender. He really could have let it run behind. Koku again, closed down straight away by Flickcroft. Keeper's come off his line. Blake in there, keeper now back on duty. Krabby again, bundled over by uh, Luis Enrique. Free kick to Rovers. Uh, it looks like uh, Mr. Krabby is going to be the one to take these, or is he just going to line things up? I would have thought Bjorn and Beale clip this in. 20 minutes gone, Rovers nil, Barcelona 1. So indeed it will be Stig Bjorn to take it, Grabby tussling with Christian Val in the uh, centre of defence. But he does put a great ball in though, Bjorn with a lot of pace on it. Two man wall, uh, what's the referee seen? He said it was pulling, either by Blake or Grabby in the middle, and he's given Barcelona the three kick. How do you see your over season going? I mean, we can talk in more detail, Stuart, for the Manchester United game, but what's realistic for Rovers in the Premiership? Well, I think Graham Simmons would be happy if Ro Rovers just finish even halfway up the league and maybe have a good run in the Cup. And many if they can push on and maybe get a top six place, that'd be marvellous, but I don't think people should expect any more than that, really, in the first season. And out of the three promoted teams, conventional wisdom seems to say that Fulham will do OK, Rovers will do OK, and Bolton won't. Yeah, and there's like a lot, lot of clubs in the, uh, and there's like a layer of clubs. There's like top five, like your Arsenal's, your United. But there's a, a few clubs like Everton and Derby, Rovers can beat. Well, the referee Mr. Holtz, he doesn't like the sliding challenge. And uh, at the moment we have 22 players out there, Stuart, resembling drowned rats, really, because it is absolutely pouring now. But no, it's like I was saying before, guy, the players enjoy it. It's nice to play when it's conditions like that. Free kick to Barcelona. Now, normally Hernandez is the one who organises these. Takes it, plays it in, looking forward to Clyde, but comes off the head. I think of David Dunn, who was back there. Over Mars again, being kept relatively quiet at the moment. Giovanni looking for a way through. Onto his right foot, stamps it into the centre. Barcelona will keep possession. They need to spread it wide, though, to the right hand side. Here's Christian Val again picking it up. Reisiger down the left. Very, very patient build up by Barcelona, who lead here by a goal to nil at Ewell Park. Hernandez, Koku, Reisiger down the left hand side. See, they don't give the ball away. If they've got to go back, they go back with it. You know, they never give it away. Midway through the first half, Philippe Koku's goal after 80 minutes, putting Barcelona one up. This time Overmars can't get on the end of that. And Rovers have the throw. In the Premiership, do you think, whereas in Division 1, Graham Sinest quite often seemed to say to his side, go out and play, do you think he'll have to take more notice of how the opposition are going to line up this time? Well, yeah, his tactics will have to be spot on in most games. Because, like I said, Derby is not a very hard game, the first game, but I mean... It's still be a very competitive game and a lot of people, just because Rovers won last year in the Cup, think it's going to be an easy game, but it won't be. Hernandez bundled off the ball by Nathan Blake, three kick to Barcelona. And after Rovers had a, a couple of decent half chances, Barcelona just seemed to have taken a, a measure of control again. Well, it's like, it's like you say, guys, they're an international class side, aren't they? Rovers' season, of course, begins at uh, Derby's Pride Park next Saturday. And a nice, easy first home game of the season against Manchester United on the following Wednesday. Well, that, that's a game everybody's... I mean, I think they're better off playing United early on in the season than maybe middle of the season. Playing them this afternoon might have been a good idea. Well, yeah. Luis Enrique again helping to knit play together. Christian Val picks it up. At the moment, the way Rovers are lined up, though, the, the back three of Barcelona have lots of time on the ball. Oh, they've, they've acres of time on the ball. That's why I think people like Nathan Blake and Grabby have got to put them under pressure a little bit more. Blake, forcing an error, gets the ball back again. Done with a shot! Oh, lucky. 
And it was just rising all the way from David Dunn. We've not seen too much of the great Harwood midfielder so far this afternoon. But I'm sure keeper Bonanno was worried for a moment. The ball played back yeah. into him by Blake, right on the edge of the area, yeah. tried to left foot it. Yeah, look at the replay, beating the keeper there. That if they, it just, just rising too much there. But it was a good play from Blake. Blake had the ball up well and he put it back into David's own path. Yeah, the ball was just rising and beating the keeper. That goes Flickcroft again in midfield. Just get uh, used to him wearing number four this afternoon. We'll have to get used to him wearing this squad number in, in future games. Damien Duff brought down. Happy with the challenge and again sliding in feet first. It's like uh, Giovanni, I think, on the far side. Down with the service, it's Luis Enrique with a very, very clumsy challenge. Yeah, we said at times Barcelona look, come to look back at the other times they looked almost casual. Well, that's right. You've, you've got to ruffle them. You've got to give them much time. They're so used to the league they're playing and having time on the ball. Overmars again comes infield. Referee's happy with the challenge from David Dunn. Clivert and Flickcroft tangling. One thing I will say, I don't yeah. think John Curtis will get a, a chance to get forward too often this no. afternoon. That Hernandez though, his range of passing has been absolutely marvellous for me. The last 20 minutes he's been superb. Giovanni loses out on the far side for a Rovers throw. Gary Flickcroft, a Rovers skipper. See, that's an example there. See, when Gary Flickcroft gave the ball away like that. You can't afford to keep giving the ball away. I suppose there are times when you just need to play it simple, don't yeah. they? Koku, wide to the right-hand side. Again, Barcelona is struggling about Giovanni, gets a touch, looking for Clivert. Now it might fall on the far side, back into Giovanni, let it run towards Clivert. Curtis spotted the danger, but again, excellent approach play from the visitors. It's like they step up a gear, when they get to the penalty area, they seem to step up a gear. Barcelona here lead by a goal to nil, 27 minutes gone in the first half. And again... Barcelona being allowed to carry the ball through midfield. It's Luis Enrique this time down the left-hand side. Hernandez pulling the strings in midfield. Inside, Philip Cocu. Hernandez again, no Rovers players are really sitting on him, which is allowing him to actually dictate the course of the game at the moment. I think Gary Flickcott's trying to get close to him, but I mean, it's the passing, they're just passing and moving all the time. They're stretching Rovers. I mean, it's a good workout for Rovers. Cocu again. Luis Enrique. Wants someone wide, Reisiger makes the run down the left-hand side, edge to the Rovers penalty here, Gillespie back with him, Curtis waiting as well, tries to take them both on, and keep Gillespie does well, it's fouled for his pains, and that's a free kick, there's a difference though between Reisiger running at you and Overmars going Yeah, here. yeah, that Overmars has been a brilliant player over the years. I suppose there's one good thing, at least he won't be playing for Arsenal against well, us this season. Yeah, yeah. Damien uh, Dunn, Duff, try that again, Damien Duff chests it down on the far side, Berg, Gillespie, despite the fact that Barcelona have had the bulk of possession, you do you think Rovers have the creative ability to actually unsettle them here? Well, they certainly had a couple of chances, especially when Damien Duff's got the ball out wide, he's put some good crosses in. Here is Duff, actually Barcelona penalty area, three waiting inside the box. To take a couple on to get the ball across. Good deep cross looking towards Flickcroft, the yeah. defender. Yes. Just left it and Gary Flickcroft scores the simplest of headers at the near post. Great cross from Damien Duff again, as we're just saying then he beat the defender. Great cross to the far post. But really the centre half really should have cleared it, but so it, I think the goalkeeper thought he was going over the top of the net, but, but, but look at this defending stuff, yeah. Stuart. Yeah. Yeah. They're well, all looking at the goalkeeper, aren't they? Well, he didn't cover his near post at all. I think it was it was it for the Koku who was back yeah. defending. I think it was, yeah. and the keeper's just totally stranded. Yeah, superb cross from Damien Duffo. Excellent. A bit more of that in the Premiership would go down very well. Yeah. Well, just as we were saying that Rovers could be dangerous in this game, they, they go and get the equaliser. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think both the wingers have got the beating of the full backs. So if they're giving the ball a lot more and hustle them a bit more, I think they could panic them. This is Reisiger now. 
So Philippe Cocu has been involved in both goals, scoring one for Barcelona and practically giving one away for Rovers. But as you say, Barcelona still keep playing the same way as they do, passing and moving. Giovanni on the far side, wins throw off uh, David Dunn. Dunn and Flickhoff are both quite deep in midfield. The Flickhoff got forward in that particular attack. Reisiger steps up towards halfway. Clivert, who's been very, very quiet this he's afternoon. He's been very quiet, yeah, he's coming deeper and deeper and deeper, yeah. It's Patrick Anderson. Gets it back again. Now it's just a little bit tighter at the moment. Flick ball on, Berg will head it clear. Falls to Overmars. Overmars gets it back again on his right foot. Clivert. Like I mentioned earlier, a run being made through the centre, and that was really good defending by Stig Bjornaby, who spotted that. But again, Barcelona pick it up, but not for long. Duff down the left-hand side, no one forward at the moment. Tries to play it along the line towards Grabby. Grabby with two Barcelona defenders blocking his way. Made sure they got the bodies in the way. Grabby will pick it up again, though, and if he plays like this throughout the season, I think he's going to please one or two of the uh, clientele down at Ewell Park. Yeah, he likes to come deep for the ball grab and then run at people. That's that's going to be his game, I think. Chip ball over the top. Friedel foot about coming. Bjornaby again did well. Friedel, well, it wasn't the most convincing defensive no. display of all time. And I don't think he, sh he was shouting enough there at uh, Gary Flicker. Now Rovers looking better going forward than defending at the moment with Keith Gillespie. Two players with him, Reisiger's the one who's detailed to man mark him and he puts out a play for a throw well at the moment both sides looking much more comfortable going forward than defending especially when they get the wingers like Overmarge as a threat down Barcelona's left as Gillespie is and Duff for Rovers Shaven headed Henning Bird Curtis to Berg Curtis once more. David Dunn back deep with his defenders at the moment. There's nowhere to go really with that and has to go all the way back to Friedel. He's closed down by Giovanni. Friedel outside his area. Kicks up field. Gillespie and Reisiger again. Berg for some reason on halfway. Gives the ball away. Now Hernandez plays it through. Full stretch there was Giovanni. And if anything, he took it away from Patrick Clyverd and was in a much better position. Now here's Blake. It's very much one of those you attack wheel attacks of the schoolyard games at the moment. Duff. Flickcroft. And Dunn, the very much the first choice central midfield partnership in Division 1. Dunn again. Grab wants it played early. Looked like a handball, but uh, he's got away with it. Played back to Gillespie. Referees missed one or two handballs this afternoon. Gillespie trying to muscle Reisiger out of the way. Back into the centre of Berg. Duff goes out wide down the left-hand side. Bjornaby chips the ball in. Only Blake in there. He's lost his defender. Mm. And the header from May from Blake was straight into the arms of Bonanno and a Barcelona goal. Yeah, great uh, pass again from Bjornaby. Superb pass just over Christopher head And um, Nathan Blake was unlucky there. He went straight to the goal. Good give, chance again. You give credit to Blake, but wasn't it awful defending again? Yeah, yeah Christopher got wrong side of him, yeah. Now here comes Grabby forward again. And it's really forcing Barcelona, like some Koku, to help out defend defensively as that ball goes behind for a corner kick. Rovers third corner of the afternoon on its way. I know we've got new caterers here at Ewood as well Stuart but you can just smell food all the way through this first <laughs> half. You can do without that. Rovers corner, 12 minutes left of the first half. Keep Gillespie to take it. Blake waiting on the edge of the six yard box, grabbing at the near post. Looking towards the Run being made late. Keeper's coming and the flaps but gets it clear of the penalty area ahead of the Craig, Craig Short. Keith Gillespie picks it up. And again, I've got to be honest, the Barcelona keeper has not impressed me. No, he looks a bit shaky when he comes out for crosses. We've got um, Jose Reina, of course, on the bench this afternoon in Barcelona. No, it's just a long, welly up field in the visitors. One apiece here at Ewell Park, 11 minutes left of the first half. I've just been watching like Kleinberg this last five minutes, his work rate has been nil. You know, he's just walking about like, like he's not interested. That's the way he plays though, doesn't Well, yeah, it? he's like a laid back kind of lad, yeah. If he gets chances in the game and scores your goals, he wins games, but mm. otherwise he can be totally anonymous. Yeah. Well, 
Reisiger with the throw. Back to Anderson once more. Rovers seem to be content to let Barcelona have possession in their own half. Luis Enrique. Christian Val again. Again, Barcelona's passing, not as crisp as it might be, but Rovers too give it away. And uh, De La Torre will have to throw on the far side. Graham Sines is watching the first half alongside side. Uh, John Williams and Rob Coyle, it looks like, in the Rovers director's box. May well see him on the touchline later on. I think he'd be quite happy where the game's going, Graham Sines, because they've, um, they've, it's a good workout for Rovers and they've not, they've not got any injuries. The one difference, I think, from a Premiership game is the pace it's played at. I don't think you'll see too many games in a Premiership played at no. this pace. But if you watch the Spanish league on television, Gary, it's, it's always like this. They just play it about, and th this does seem to step up a gear when they get near the penalty area. I suppose it's what you're used to, isn't yeah. it? English fans are not used to this yeah. sort of thing. And I must admit, I, I'm a big fan of Spanish football. I watch it quite a lot on Sky, and I, it's a superb league. I get the feeling that English fans like to see the boot going in and... Yeah, yeah. They go very quiet when teams are just passing the ball around. Now, chip ball over the top, the flag again and stayed down. Uh, not for the first time this afternoon, but Overmars could get on the end of it. And Friedel will get it clear. Curtis, for practically the first time, tries to get his way forward. Barcelona rob him, though. And here's Clivert coming through the centre. Done back with him. Clivert can't find the Barcelona shirt. But uh, Luis Enrique will pick it up in midfield. Here's Koku. Wide to Overmars. Trying to beat Gillespie on his left foot. I think he'll settle for a corner kick. That's what he's looking for anyway. Yeah, good defending from Keith Gillespie there. He matched Overmars there for Pierce. That was good defending. So just in the nine minutes left of the first half. One apiece of Ewood. Bustle in the corner down the left-hand side. Overmars takes it. Cleared back out on his near side. For Arsenal player will pick it up again. Into the area. Gillespie in front of him. Tries to lay it back. Looking for Hernandez once more. Square it'll go. Luis Enrique waiting in the middle. Cross shot. Which Enrique tried to get on the end of. I suppose on this skiddy surface. One touch could cause problems with a defender. In the end though. No problem. So we're eight minutes left in the first half. As you say, it's a good workout. In other respects, it'll be nothing like the game at Derby, which I think, Stuart, will be slightly different from this. Well, one. a bit more cut and thrust one, and a bit more um, challenges going in against Derby. But um, it's a good game, and Rovers have done very well so far. Just let's, let, we keep forgetting they're playing Barcelona. You know, they were one of the best teams in the world, aren't they? Christian Val gets the touch into Koku in midfield. Alongside Hernandez once more. Wide on the right. Touch for Giovanni. Now here's Hernandez once more. Barcelona quite happy just to stroke the ball around for the moment until they put in the pressure. Gillespie is touching Reisiger seems to be the weak link at the moment. And he misses his challenge there and brings down Ravi for another free kick. Reisiger seems to be one to put in the pressure on. Well, I, I read reading about him in one of the national papers last week. He was supposed to be going to a club in Italy. So whether he's in the shop window today, I don't know. He's picked up 49 caps for Holland. Yeah. So you would suggest he's a decent player. Oh, yeah, he's a great attacking fullback. But at the moment, he looks to be more the emphasis on attack than defence. Ball breaks on the far side for Giovanni again. He's got support in the middle. Giovanni maybe just overrun it, tried to cut it back across. And Craig Shaw, I think it was, who got in at full stretch. But uh, rather fortunate Giovanni really just carried the ball too far. Yeah, I think he just tried to get to the bar and then clip it back. I think Clive was on his own. Damien Duff can't keep it in play on the far side. I would expect, or would I be right to expect, Rovers will probably use all the substitutes in the second yeah, I half. Yeah, I think both, both teams will do, Gary. I think there'll be a comp new both sides will make a lot of changes at half-time. It, it will be very warm out there as well. Six minutes to go. The rain eases out to Ewood. Let's just say that that's the last thing they need, guys. Anybody to pick up an injuries now before next week. We want two players with niggles. Craig Short pre-season. Obviously, Matt Janssen with that shoulder problem. As well, probably the most worrying one. Alan Marnan seems to be back on his 
Way to full fitness alongside Damien Johnson. Now Overmars looking one on one. What goes inside? Looking for the return there from Clavin. It was almost too elaborate. Gillespie clears but can't find another blue and white shirt. Koku picks it up down the left hand side. He's got David Dunn with him and Dunn looks to be the stronger there. Koku looks for support, hasn't got it at the moment. Reisiger comes forward, plays a deep ball though. It's the far post. Up goes Stigbjornov. He doesn't really judge it too well. Um, Barcelona again pick up possession down that right hand side. Hernandez again. Trying to trick away through was uh, Luis Enrique. Clear back into the Barcelona half and sets the visitors coming forward again. Mentioned the work of Hernandez. This is one cap for Spain, but uh, a yeah, ball but flicked over the top and Overmars this time is offside. But Hernandez is very much the workhorse in midfield, isn't he? Trying to counterbalance the likes of Koku, who like to get forward. Yeah, he's, he's a good, good old in midfield player. He's, like I say, his range of passing has been marvellous for me. Six days ahead of the start of the new Premiership season. Rovers at the moment holding Barcelona 1 0 here. And he would. Grabby again has not seen as much of the ball perhaps in the last five or ten minutes. He's had to come a lot deeper, but he's, he's, when he receives the ball, he's, he's very tidy on the ball, he's grabbing. He holds it up very well. I think it was a surprise. I know he was playing in the Italian B division last year that perhaps none of the bigger Italian clubs had a, a closer look at him. Well, I think there were one or two sniffing around him, weren't they? But let's say Rovers must have been watching him for quite a while. Nathan Blake, I think the referee's blown his whistle penalty. and he's given a penalty. <laughs> Well, the referee had a far better view from his angle than we did. Well, he was, he was tugging at his shirt. I mean, be in, when you sit looking at the replay again now, he's pulling out his shirt. It's, it, is a, it is a penalty. You can't complain about that. Christian Val was the defender. And I don't think Blake against Christian Val is an equal contest at the moment. No, I don't know whether that Christian Val is a regular player for uh, Barcelona. I haven't seen him when I've watched him on TV before. Well, let's see who steps up for this penalty kick. It's usually David Dunn. He's got the ball in his hands at the mm. moment. I don't know if uh, Mr. Grabby likes taking penalties. So, Dunn to spot it up. As you would expect. Dunning for England. Let's see if he gets the penalty first, I think. Up against Bernardo. He's come off his line just to try and slow things down a little bit. So, three minutes left of the first half. And up steps David Dunn for, to put Rovers in front for the first time. Dunn. And saved by the keeper, gets a second chance. Blake goes in there, it's cleared off the line, and somehow it's in the back of the net. Could have been Dunn, could have been Blake who got the final touch. I think Nathan Blake got the final touch there, I think. But the goalkeeper moved well before David Dunn, the, Dunn took the ball anyway. Yes, that doesn't seem to be picked up. Dunn with the penalty kick, trying to place it to the keeper's left. Full stretch kept it out. Blake went in there. Uh, did yeah, roll in it. Might even have come off a defender, but Blake will claim it. I think Blake will claim that, yeah. So Rovers ahead for the first time this afternoon. I reckon that Patrick Anderson got the final touch. Yeah. Looking at that replay from a different angle. No, it doesn't matter as long as the ball went in the net, Gary. It doesn't matter. Nathan Blake will claim it. Rovers lead by two goals to one here at Ewood. And it couldn't be better, any better pre-season. Two minutes left in the first half. Clybert's pass goes astray again. Yeah, it's a good confidence booster for Rovers if they can if they can win this game. I don't think this game's going to stay at 2-1 though, do no, you? No, no. No, especially their manager will, um, I think, have things to say at that time as well. Just like you say, when we saw all the Spanish press, I mean, they're taking this game very seriously. There's that absolute horde of uh, people come over from Spain to, to cover Barcelona this afternoon. Well, they, they have a national paper every day which to divorce just a pay just to football to Barcelona. And they far outnumber the uh, British press down here. Overmars again, he started very well, but it's been kept fairly quiet. Hernandez spreading the ball to uh, De Torre down that far side. Tries to do too much though, Rovers through Duff. Grabby again was back helping out defensively. Bjorn beat up towards halfway. Here's David Dunn. Gillespie free down the right. Ball chipped over the top. Duff wasn't quite sure where it was. Christian Val again didn't look too convincing but got a foot in there to put it out of play. 
inside the final minutes of a first half. Which, as you say, really couldn't have gone any better, could he, after conceding that early goal? Yeah, like several Rovers have matched them the last 20 minutes. First 20 minutes it was all Barcelona, but this last uh, 15, 20 minutes Rovers have matched them. They've, they've like hustled them a lot more this last 10 minutes of the game. Beyond People like Christopher, look, when you put him under pressure, he, does, he looks very ordinary play. Throwing to Rovers on the far side. Final few seconds of the first half. Not sure if Mr. Holsey, the referee, will add time or not. Pre-season games I've seen so far this season, we've played practically dead on 45 minutes. Here's uh, Grabby again. Kristen Val this time gets it clear. Looking at towards halfway and Giovanni. Rovers with numbers back. And Bjornaby goes back. And we are actually going to see time added. I'm going to see one minute to add. Get back over the first half, Stuart. As I said, it'll get very messy in the second half with the substitutions, but uh, this has been very, very promising. Yeah, like Sarah, we've matched them this last 20 minutes, Rovers. I mean, uh, Gillespie and Damien Duff have been excellent for me. Nathan Blake, this last 10 minutes, has put the two centre centre-halves under pressure and they haven't liked it. We haven't seen that much of Grabby yet, what he can do yet, really. Damien Duff, last chance for Rovers to come forward in the first half. Kristen Val again loses out, gets a second chance. Most of them do look very stretched in the centre of defence every time that Rovers attack. It's a pity uh, Matt Janssen missed this game because he would have loved to have played against these, this kind of side with, with the skill he's got. Bonanno kicking forward. I reckon we'll time up for the first half. Referee has a quick look at his watch. And See, that's what Nathan Blair's done well. He's done that a lot now, Aslan, and they don't like it. Gets his point across to Patrick Anderson. And this really will be the last action of this first half. we played our minute of time added on. Hernandez trying to play through Clivert and then on the far side Dunn's forward again looking for some support Grabby with Blake waiting in the centre Grabby though this time Kristen Val robs him and the referee will blow his whistle for half time so so far so good for Rovers to get a standing ovation at the interval here at Ewood Park after going behind to a Philip Koku goal after 18 minutes Gary Flitcroft with a header, leaving the keeper stranded, made it 1-1. And then we reckon Nathan Blake falling in inside the penalty area, putting Rovers 2-1 up at half-time.
But at the moment, the Rovers just have 10 players out, so I wonder if we're going to see a change at half time. As we uh, well, uh, lackadaisically get set up for the second half. No one seems in a particular hurry to get back on the way again. Nathan Blake is still out there as is uh, Chikyo Grabby. It looks more or less the same side, Gary. It's both sides, I don't think, have made any changes. Oh, yeah, I can see a lot at the back for Barcelona. So here comes Alan Mann. That's, uh, as I mentioned, Rovers making one change at half time. Alan Mann into midfield and. Is it Gary Flickcroft, isn't it? It's like Gary Flickcroft yeah. has uh, gone off at half time. Can't see him at the moment anyway. No. And I'm uh, being told that to uh, get kick off in the second half. Uh, Patrick Anderson, we were told, Stuart was going to play 45 minutes, so that could well be another change at the back for Barcelona. I can see uh, Marcello Anderson on there in defence, up against Blake. Christian Val actually went in and uh, went in and uh, made a challenge this time, which makes a nice change. I'm surprised the Dutch lads haven't gone off, you know, because they're supposed to be playing, you know, against England on Wednesday. I thought they would have gone off. Hernandez through to the far side. And now Barcelona will be attacking the Darwin end of the second half. But Koku gets a touch. Hernandez again, closed down by Blake. Barcelona have also got uh, Carlos Fuyarl on, on the right hand side of defence, who's uh, another substitute at half time. Barcelona, three changes made in total. Picked out a couple of them for you at the moment. Marcel at the back and Puyo at the back as well. Down that far side, Barcelona attacking now. It's closed down. Um, Rovers have a chance to play. Yeah, just a one Rovers change. Gary for Crosswife, I believe, had a baby yesterday. And uh, perhaps he's dashed off to be with her instead of uh, completing in the second half here. So I'm sure we'll see further changes as this half goes on. And uh, just to point out that uh, the waitress service that they brought up to us at half time was very nice here at Evil Park. And I don't even like tomato soup. So throw down this near side, which Barcelona will take. It's uh, Puyol who's come on down the rise, as I mentioned. Into the centre, Hernandez still out there. can still see Koku and Clivert. And it looks like... Here we go. The number 15's on. Shall we call him Fabio, Stuart? I think that's about <laughs> the best bet. Barcelona attacking now with Saviola. Ball right across. Comes out to the right-hand side. Fabio picks it up. Poor touch by Hernandez. So I make that four changes to Barcelona at half-time. It's a very strange formation they play, isn't it? Sort of like two at the back and then two in front of them. and Not really figured that out during the first half. Still see Overmars on the far side as well. The main thing is there's just one Rovers change at the interval, bit of holding by uh, Damien Duff, and the free kick is taken by Puyol. Forward it goes from the number 15. So we're going to call him Fabio because Rochem back is a bit of a, a mouthful. <laughs> I haven't spotted Luis Enrique on this second half, so I reckon he's one of the players who's gone off at half time. And Fabio is playing wide right at the moment. Picks it up now. Damien Duff with him. Back it goes to Puyol again. Can't wait while we get seven or eight substitutes in the Premiership, and it will happen one day, Stuart. Yes, it will. Clivert comes into midfield. They had a very quiet first half, all told. This is Koku again. And... Uh, Trying to make progress down that far side. Foot comes in. And that will be a corner to Barcelona. So I make it four changes for Barcelona, one for Rovers. Here's the Barcelona corner down the far side. Mark Overmars to take it. Saviola has gone into the centre. Is it going to land it? That's for a first-time shot. Friedel didn't hold it. And the first-time shot came in from Marcello. And Friedel was a bit fortunate there. Yeah, I don't think Friedel saw that to lesson because he went through a crowd of players there. It was very unfortunate that he did even come off his knees. Back into centre and Hernandez again. 
Picks it up once more. Nothing wide for him. Finally, the run is made forward by Puyol from basically a full back position. Back into Fabio again. And just too much weight on that ball for Obermars. And really, it needed someone from the back, presumably Rice, to actually make a run forward to get on the end of that. Mark Hughes, we can see, warming up down below us. Let's uh, we get another chance here in the, the box to have a look at that replay. Yeah, we look at the replay now. But the ball come through a crowd of players. He did very well, Friedel, getting his body behind it. I'm sure Mark Hughes, uh, Stuart, will make an appearance at some yeah, stage. Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. I think most of the um, substitutes will do at some stage. Beyond the forward. Almost worked for substitute Marn. Of course... Signed permanently for Rovers after being on loan last season for one and a half million from Sporting Lisbon during the summer. Clybert took too long to release that really. Fabio plays it first time, goes in for the shot second time, and again Friedel did well to, to grab it back again off a skiddy surface as one of the substitutes, Saviola, was closing him down. Yeah, it's great football there. I mean, the two one twos there, and Fabiola had just had a good shot. And Friedel did well holding it on the skiddy ground as well. Meanwhile, back line, Boston are trying to break through again. Clybert, though, loses out. He is done. The referee's quite happy for play to go on. Barcelona have lost it. Blake gets a touch, but the game's just stepped up a bit in pace, hasn't it, in the second half? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I say. I think Barcelona won't want to uh, lose this game, so I think they'll have had a few strong words at halftime. We've already played six minutes, second time around. Rovers two, Barcelona one. Goals from Koku for Barcelona. Flicker off Great. and Blake. Well. And now the long ball over the top to the right-hand side. Curtis on a rail foray oh. forward, but his touch was poor. And it goes straight behind. Yeah, you could hear the, the groans around the Ewood. It's a great pitch at our tremendous ball from David Dunn. Fully, fully 45, 50 yards there. And Curtis's first touch just let him down. That was the best pass of the game, that. Meanwhile, here's Fabio again down the right-hand side for Barcelona. This is Rovers 2 at Barcelona 1. Ball chipped up looking for Kleiber. Friedel calls for it. Berg makes sure he gets there first. And on the bench for Rovers, there's uh, Marcus Bent. And uh, that's of Craig Hignett. Mark Hughes, I'm sure, will get a run out against Barcelona at some stage in the second half. Yeah, I think both Blake and Gravy will come off at some stage, and Bent and Hughes will come on. Gravy again, Rovers' main signing course during the summer. Six and three quarter million from Italian side Tanana. Mark Hughes, as we mentioned, was uh, warming up for the last few minutes. Starts back on the trainer's bench alongside Alan Murray, who's taken over as the reserve team coach at Ewood this season. Blake stretches, gets his body in the way again, done to Duff and you feel there must be more goals in this game. Grab his wide left up against Puyol. Flicks the ball through looking for Duff. Chipped in keeper struggling but uh, gets there as Blake collides with him and the keeper's not too happy with Nathan Blake at all and the referee will have to go and do a little bit of sorting out there. I think Nathan Blake certainly made sure he got the keeper if he didn't get the ball. Yeah, I think the keeper's making a meal of it though. I mean Nathan Blake had to challenge for the ball. You see the Spanish people they don't like any contact at all. Another good ball from Damien Duff again to the far post. I don't think Nathan Blake could have been expected to suddenly vaporise himself out of the way there. I mean, like I said, the Spanish, they don't like any challenges at all. Eight minutes gone, second half. Rovers 2, Barcelona 1. Here's one of the substitutes, Marcello. Ball over the top again, looking for Saviola. Comfortable for the Rovers' defence and for Friedel as well. Forward from Bjorn to be down the line. Christian Val gets the header there, and the Barcelona number 17 seems to have decided to make a few challenges in the second half. Well, I think he's had a few crisp words at half time because, like you say, he's making a lot more challenges than what he was first half. Bjorn to be with the Rovers throw down the left hand side. Looked like he was pushed over there. Ball though stayed in play. Done. Sandwich between two players, and it was uh, our friend Fabio who made the challenge. I wonder if one or two more of those challenges will go in if the game stays with Rovers ahead because Barcelona won't like this. No, they'll get a bit frustrated, like you say. 
Marcello gets it clear. He's the only one you can see doing anything over Mars. When he gets the ball, he's so much pace about him and he runs at people. As well as this Hernandez in midfield. Koku with him over Mars wide on the Barcelona left. He falls over and uh, John Curtis will pick it up. Gillespie now from a right back position swings that forward. Marcello with the header and that will find its way back to Bernardo. Well, I'm saying it's Bernardo actually just spotted there, Stuart. I do him a disservice. That is, uh, that is the substitute keeper, Jose Reina, who's come on at half time. So Barcelona actually made five changes. Didn't spot the keeper had changed. Hope you're following this at home. It's getting very complicated, isn't it? And we'll get more so as the second half goes on. Again, Barcelona taking their time about the build up. Marcello again. This down foul. Forward we're looking for Overmars. That's a better ball. Overmars can't take it with him though. Again, Curtis does well, but now to play for a throw on the far side. Rivers so far, as we mentioned, only made the one change, which has uh, kept things fairly simple as far as uh, Rovers are concerned. Puyol again, down the right. Back it goes to Kristen Val. A check on the watch tells us we played 11 minutes of the second half. Lots of Barcelona possession again, as there was in the first half, of course. Puyol. Up against Duff. Back into Hernandez. Very, very patient builder. Bordering on the soporific at times, but uh, Barcelona keeping possession. And the ball played through for Koch, who made an intelligent run through the centre by setting, by setting short um, Bird. But there was too much pace on, it on this surface, and Breedle was comfortable. Here's Stigbjornaby. Into Duff. Crabby's so far she's played on the left hand side a lot more yeah, in the second he's half. Yeah, played very deep as well. I mean, really, he hasn't had a chance to have a shot on goal because he's been coming so deep, he's not really got into the penalty area. Well, I was uh, saying before the game, I've never seen him play before. No. And from this afternoon, it's very difficult to judge because it is, say yeah. he's not been up there, has no, he? No, I mean, he's, he got so many goals last year for his uh, Italian side, but today you wouldn't have thought he, he, he was a goal scorer the way he's playing. Fabio again, ball forward to Cliver, Overmars down the far side, would have been a far better ball than the one through the middle aimed at Saviola, and Berg made sure that was no way through. Here's Gillespie, Blake in front of him, being held at the moment by Marcello, who's sticking very, very tight today from Blake in the second half. That is almost inside his shirt is that tight. Hernandez again, game starting to be stretched a little bit now. Saviola, right idea, not very good layoff though. Trying to get Reisiger coming forward down the left hand side. Rovers with a throw. Rovers three signings during the summer, of course. Gravi started again this afternoon. Marne signed permanently. Of course, scored in Greer. £200,000 signing from Clyde, and he was one of the scorers in the win at Valley Parade against Bradford last weekend and Gordon Greer is amongst the players on the bench this afternoon. Gordon Greer, I guess, from playing at Clyde one moment, must think Christmas has come very early this oh, it's, year. It's a tremendous move for him, isn't it? When you think uh, two years ago he was playing like equivalent to Unibond uh, League, he's done very well. Gordon Greer amongst the row of substitutes this afternoon has had a pretty decent run out in pre-season. Clyde tried to get that ball through. Barcelona just like to over elaborate at times when the simple ball's on they don't often, sometimes they don't play it do they Not in. now here comes Barcelona substitution number six and this is Roberto Trasoras that right Stuart I believe you Gary <laughs> and it will be I think Mark Overmars who's coming off I think Rovers will be quite happy about that Quite a few countries, of course, have mid-season, or mid-week rather, friendless. And you'll see Mark Omar's getting a, a good round of applause around here. Yeah, he's had a tremendous game this afternoon. He's, st he's still a great player like he was when he was at Arsenal. 
Superb to watch. So Tresaurus comes on. And with this Barcelona formation, it's a bit difficult to, to find where he fits in. He's slotted into the centre so far. Crabby can't get a touch on the edge of the Barcelona penalty area. The latest sub tries to go in there. Christian Val has been fouled by Blake. And that's another free kick. But Rovers won't be too unhappy at this. We're going to see a Rovers substitution, by the way, in a moment as well. Rovers won't be too unhappy if it stays like this. I mean, it's all up to Barcelona to try and push the game a little, isn't it? Yeah, I think they will in the last 20 minutes of the game. They're going to they're going to push a lot men, more men forward. Marcus Bent is uh, the Rovers substitution. Graham Sinesse is down on the touchline in the second half. We played 15 minutes. Here's Kristen Val again. Fabio down the right-hand side. Forward again. And that substitute, Trashoros tries to get a touch. Koku now. Reisig has gone down the left. Koku tries a shot. Might get a second chance here. There's nothing wide at all, though, down that right-hand side. Hernandez looks at Reisig has wanted the ball for a while. And across comes Keith Gillespie. Reisig went from very, very deep on his right foot. Ball's out of play. And this is the cue, I think, for Rovers to make the substitution. Marcus Bent will come on. And now it is uh, Nathan Blake who's put himself about to good effect this afternoon. He will come on. Yeah, he's had a good, a good game this afternoon, Nathan Blake. He's, uh, he's really got into Chris Ivar and he gave him a torrid first half. He's had a, he's had a good half as uh, Nathan Blake. If you watch uh, Spanish football every week, Stuart, you should be an expert on these pronunciations. <laughs> I do, I must admit, I watch most of the Spanish games every week on Sky. 16 minutes gone, second half. It is 2-1 to Rovers here at Ewood. Now we've seen the introduction of Marcus Bent and Alan Marn in the second period. Rovers, of course, start the Premiership at Pride Park. Derby away next Saturday. It won't be easy, but there could be tougher tests for the first game than Manchester United at home a week on Wednesday, which certainly won't be easy. And then, uh, for memory, Spurs at home. It's one of those bizarre things because there were so many games played on Sunday because of TV commitments in UEFA Cup this season. I think Rovers only have one Saturday home game for about six or seven weeks. Hernandez could be worse. Still in the nation one. We're playing Thursday nights, Saturday nights, and Sunday nights. Break on the far side. Pull back to Kleiber with a chance off the crossbar when he should have buried it, and he knows he should have buried it. The run was made by Ryan good around the far side, and that's a major let off for Rovers. Duff throws through the centre. It was being held, and the referee quite rightly gives the free kick. Yeah, it was a great ball which started from Koku over the top to Reisinger and Reisinger's pace got him through and really Clivert should have scored there. I would have, I would have put money on him scoring yeah, from there. A player of his class should have scored. And it just shows you even the best players miss, miss chances. Here's Marcus Bent now, back to his first touch since coming on. Down the left hand side. Marcus Bent again. Runs out of space. But Rovers settle for the throw. And he goes to Duff again, who Barcelona have kept a little bit more quiet in the second half. He's fouled this time by uh, Fabio. Free kick, which um, I think Stig Bjorni will take. Takes it short to Dunn. Gillespie in a central position. Curtis makes his way forward down the right. Gillespie, he's fancy a shot. It's been crowded out at the moment. Back to Curtis it goes. Dunn again in that central midfield position. Challenge comes in from Trashoros, who hasn't looked the best so far, but Rovers get a free kick. Chipped in by Gillespie, out again by Kristen Ball. didn't get too much distance though. And another free kick this time for the challenge by Keith Gillespie on the Barcelona defender. And it's a bit stop-start at the moment. Yeah, it's got to look a bit scrappy the last five, ten minutes. Bjornaby heads out, and Barcelona have won themselves a free kick. Saviola wants to get on with it quickly. It's taken by Fabio, and once more here's Hernandez in midfield. So try to stay on side. Hernandez finds its way through through Tresorus, then down the left hand side, Reisiger again, couldn't take it in his stride. And maybe it's just me, but to me, Michael Reisiger's having one of those afternoons. 
Well, just before he made a great run, which uh, Koku found him, and he did very well there then. But he's he's had a very frustrating afternoon. But uh, I think Keith Koleski's kept him very quiet. 19 gone, second half, Rovers 2, Barcelona 1. Puyol. Landis again in midfield as the rain once more intensifies at Ewood. We had summer for a couple of weeks, didn't we? It was very nice when it was here. Just to remind you, Stuart, it is August. <laughs> this is Hernandez once more. Bent trying to get back at Koku. Barcelona just keeping it for the moment. Wide to Fabio down the right hand side. Duff with him. Forces him onto his less favoured left foot. And then this nice ball through inside the area. Saviola couldn't quite take it with him. Brought down again. Shot charged down. And one of the best of shots by Trashoras. And Frido clears upfield. Barcelona pick it up straight away though. Koku again. Rise to go down the left hand side. Yeah, they're starting to push a few men forward now, Barcelona. Koku's gone a lot more forward than what he did first time. Fabio uses uh, Puyol as a decoy down the right-hand side. Ball chips over the top of the game. It's a little bit overdone. And Brad Friedel's headed back. Sort of headed back to Friedel. And he, I think he was very conscious of keeping the ball in play there and almost let it into the Barcelona forward. On a slippy surface... Friedel clears again up towards halfway. Reisiger chests it down, being closed down by Bent, who's I think robbed him on the far side. And uh, Marcus Bent wins a free kick. Still on the bench for Rovers, uh, John Fyle and Craig Higgins at Martin Taylor and Gordon Greer. I assume it's one of these pre-season games, Stuart, where you can bring on as many subs as you wish. Yeah, well, they would have probably arranged that before the game, yeah. 21 minutes gone, second half of this Sunday afternoon here at Ewell Park. And after Barcelona stepped the pace up at the start of the second half, it's just it's just drifted a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, the Rovers have done very well. They've confined them. They've not let them have too much possession of the ball. And the Rovers have passed the ball a lot better second half. That rises Puyol again ahead of Damien Duff. Throw to Rovers down this near side, which is their left. Of course, we're watching our usual vantage point here in the back of the, the main stand here, the Jack Walker stand at uh, Ewood. Well, it's raining so heavily, you can actually hear it falling, which is always a bit of a giveaway. Koku's ball forward, Saviola, Clivert was offside, flag stays down, ball played through again. And sometimes you think that rather than actually playing those to the ball, Stuart, maybe they might actually take the ball on themselves, but it's to Rovers benefit that they haven't. Yeah, they're, trying, they're just trying for little one-twos around the box. I mean, they've had a few chances where they could have had a shot on goal, but they prefer trying to play the quick one-twos. Mono has got in there ahead of Hernandez. But everything's on the floor to feet. Trashoras, wide. Puyol down the right-hand side. Cross comes beyond him, he gets the ball in, that's dreadful. Straight out of play, behind for a goal kick. Last bit of uh, control to bring it down, but I assume he was looking for a cross. Yeah, I think he just tried to whip it straight across with an ungreasy surface, but he got it all wrong. So Rovers 2-1 up here at Ewell Park. And a decent value for that, really. It's the time side with the reputation of Barcelona. Now, not the best of touches by Jose Reina. is Grabby, doing an extended run out this afternoon, Damien Duff, tries a shot, skids off the surface, keeper makes a, a decent two-handed save, pushing it wide, and Reisiger picks it up. Yeah, great shot from Damien Duff there, did, I, did the right thing there, he got, a, he, got, he got a couple of yards in front of the defender and then he got a goal, goal. very unlucky, the goal did very well getting down to it. Meanwhile, Barcelona breaking as we have a quick look at the replay. And I think, I think the way Damien Duff's played today, Barcelona will be after him. Well, the Vistas have got themselves a free kick. It's very central. Maybe not the best of angles on this. Koku perhaps will be one of those who might fancy this. Overmars, of course, has gone off. Hernandez. <coughs> and the shot from Hernandez was straight into the arms of Friedel. He tried to take it quickly. Um, basically, it didn't work. 
Here's Marcus Bent again, just inside the Barcelona half. Bent goes on a run, gets past Marcello. Marcello did well. I think he got uh, a foot in legally there. The referee certainly thought so. Yeah, I think that was a good tackle there. Now once again, in midfield with Saviola. Wide to the right-hand side and Fabio once more. Barcelona again, give it away though. Martin doing well in midfield. Grabby will chase down the left-hand side. Can he keep it in play? Well, I thought he had, but the flag went up straight away from the assistant referee. I'm being, I'm being good this season. I'm going to call them assistant referees. And it's a throw to Barcelona. Again, Hernandez has seen probably more of the ball than anyone else in the field this afternoon. Yeah, he's had a tremendous game. He's, he's been their best player by far. Game at the moment uh, going at walking pace. Puyol gets a touch. Hernandez forward again for Saviola. Koku gets a touch and then Reisiger wide on the left hand side. Now it's the quality of the crossing. Gillespie closes him down straight away and robs him comfortably. Now that's no contest. Uh, Reisiger stayed down. I think that's probably, mm. well, maybe wounded prior as much as anything else. Yeah, he's done very well, Gillespie. He's, uh, he's given Reisinger a torrid afternoon. Time it doesn't pay off for Marcus Bent further forward. Reisiger's finally back on his feet. I think he'll be going off very shortly. As well as kicked out of play. Well, they haven't got many substitutes left, Stuart. We haven't seen Sergi Barjuan. Barjuan. I think he's a midfield player now. Uh, can be a wing back. We see capped by Spain as well. So. There were what, seven on the bench to start with, we've seen six come on, so... Mr. Min, I'm looking forward to a nice uh, little run back to the car after the game if it stays <laughs> like this. Can you get pneumonia in August? <laughs> At the moment, Barcelona are only causing the odd sporadic problem. Here's Trashoras, Cliver switched feet well inside the area. Saviola goes down, he's given a free kick, I think, for the challenge on Cliver rather than the later one. Yeah, for a the moment Saviola. there, I thought he'd give a penalty then. He'd give the foul on Cliver just outside the box. Yeah, he gave the first foul, didn't yeah. he, rather than possibly yeah. a second one. So Rovers with, what, six in the wall again? I bet the glad Rivaldo's not playing them. Yeah, it's a shame though, isn't it? Yeah, he lad, lads were sending play out of would, yeah. Another player, of course, is involved in midweek international action. So, free kick to Barcelona. And Fabio thought about say, a kick. Koku usually gets involved in Andes, we've seen take them so far. You can see the way Koku is shaping up. I would have thought he'll try it this time with his left foot. Looking for a left footer here. Right on the D on the edge of the area. Robert's wall being pushed further back. Clivert's stood in front of the wall at the moment. Referee will stride out 10 yards and that will push the wall back an extra yard at least taking a long time to get this sorted out Rovers will not particularly happy about moving further back I think you're right, Koku must be favourite here he looks like he's going to try to shape up yeah. Koku left footed into Cliver tries a second shot and this time it's right. wide but again it comes off the wall and um, Philip Koku's expression says it all, really. Yeah, good defending, though, for Rovers. They kept, they kept a straight line there and uh, they got, did a, got a good block on it. If Cliver had got himself out of the way, that one way have gone into the far it corner. Might have, might have done, yeah. 28 gone, second half. 2 1 to Rovers. It can turn the near post and Cliver. And someone's going to get penalised here. Referee's pointing. He's not happy about that. Now, what's he given here? Pulling the shirt or something. Give a penalty. I think he might have given a penalty. Give a penalty for pulling the shirt, I think. Cliver was the one who was involved. Yeah. That's what I think he's done it for. I mean, it'd be interesting to look at the replay again, but I'm thinking it's for pulling shirt. Well, Cliver immediately protested. Um, we'll get another chance to have a look at the replay. Pulling his shirt, I think. Cliver was at the near post. Uh, was it Henningberg that they gave the foul against? Something for the crowd to get wound up about. We've only got 16 minutes of play left. And Mark Holtz is definitely given a penalty kick. He's getting booked as well now. That's silly, it's not worth a booking, I agree. Well, usually pre-season the book stays away, but... It's booking Rome. David Dunn, I think. So again, there's going to be 
another long break. Keep Gillespie gets waved away. I think David Dunn's going to get a book in here. Indeed it is. It is David Dunn who's booked. First player this afternoon. And now Barcelona have a penalty kick. And it's like uh, Xavier Hernandez to take it. Hernandez against Friedel and scores and makes it 2-2 with 15 minutes left. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he, what he has given the referee the penalty for. But the only, th only thing with his actions is somebody were pulling his shirt. So, well, it's a good penalty, hard and low. Friedel chose correctly but couldn't get a hand on it right into the far corner. Was it Hernandez who put it in? Yeah. So we're back to 2-2, two, two. and we're inside the last 15 minutes. Kristen Val rises, gets the header partially clear, in goes Bent. And now, hits back with Stig Bjornaby down the left-hand side. Rain shows no signs of abating here at Ewood. Grabby down the left, Christian Val with him. Tries to lay it back, Grabby gets a second chance. And Barcelona should clear here, it's a bit of a blind clearance though, picked up by Short again. Berg. And now Dunn. Plays it through, Grabby looks offside to me, play's gone on though. And then Grabby commits a foul. And I think uh, the player down there made absolutely certain, was it Puyol made absolutely certain and he got the free kick. I do like it when it goes bad tempered. It's just going to look a bit bad tempered in the last few minutes. Well, it's bound to be in some games. Both, te both teams want to win it. Barcelona with four forward here for this attack. Rovers have to be a little bit wary. As it falls on the edge here. Saviola with a chance for the shot. There was an appeal for handball, which wasn't given. Saviola on his right foot got the shot in, which Friedel didn't need to save. Yeah, like I said, just looking for the quick one twos in around the box there. Let's see. I think it was Ambol, yeah. You'd have to say Rivers had chances to clear that one, but yeah. We're back to 2-2 two -two here, Eddie Wood. Koku after 18 minutes, the cross equalizer after 28. Blake after 42 again, that's Nathan Blake. And then in the second half that and then there's penalty after 75. Here's Marcus him. Bent. Not too much understanding with Gravy, but Rovers still have it. Gillespie down the right. Gets the ball in there, looking towards Grabby. Man and ball arrive at the same time. Marcello and Grabby both go down after that clash of heads it was inside a nasty the Rovers' area. Yeah. I think they both went for the ball. Yeah. And I think there's a definite change in style of defending between Marcello and what we saw from Patrick Anderson yeah. in the first half. Yeah. I think Marcello's much more physical, isn't he? Yeah. Another chance to have a look at this replay. And really, you'd think the Barcelona player would come off worse because yeah. Gravi was heading on to him. Yeah. It's a chance for the uh, water bottles to come on, as if they didn't have enough water around Blackburn this afternoon. As um, the give attention goes on the far side, well, inside the penalty think area. Pulling Patrick Clivett's shirt. Free kick. Well, I'm not sure if it will be a free kick when we resume. We're getting a painful collision between the two inside the penalty area. And Rovers have two substitutes lined up anyway. Mark Hughes is one of them, so maybe Chikio Grabby, that will be his final part of this afternoon. Martin Taylor is the other one. And a lot of work for the Rovers Bisio to do down there. So here come the two Rovers substitutions. And uh, Grabby looks a little bit worse for wear and not quite win it after that collision. Henningberg is the player going off. He'll be replaced by Martin Taylor. Uh, Henningberg throws the captain's armband on at least a moment to Craig Shaw. Uh, probably the biggest cheer will be for Mark Hughes' appearance. And I think he will replace uh, Rovers number 10, Grabby. Yeah, he looks very grubby, doesn't he? So, on comes Mark Hughes. I suppose Rovers will hope that um, Grabby hasn't got concussion because that would put a question mark over the first game of the season if he has. Yeah. 
I don't think there's anything specific in football as in rugby you can't play for seven days but uh, it looks very very groggy down mm. there that's rather disruptive things 11 minutes left it's two apiece here I think uh, Barcelona will settle for a 2-2 I would have thought so. I'm just, I'm, yeah, like I say, it's been a good, interesting game. It's been a very good workout for Rovers. I just hope they haven't picked uh, an injury up with Grabby there in the last, uh, last part of the game. So, so part of a fitness test as well, I think, for Rovers this afternoon. Yeah, it's been a very good workout. Free kick. Bjorn will be the taker. Hughes waits on the edge of the area. More of a physical presence in there. Ball in, Bjorn. good ball by Bjorn will be. Hughes couldn't get on the end of it. Marcello got there first. Gillespie... We'll have a run at Reisiger. Wide it goes to Curtis. Chip back in towards Hughes. On the volley. He's not even on the field for about a minute. And Mark Hughes, wouldn't you know, he'd score against Barcelona. Put himself about. And we what, 10 minutes to go. Rovers lead 3 2. Great run from Curtis, though. A great cross again, but Mark Hughes, what a good finish. He's done that time and time again in Europe. Tremendous finish. Followed it, right footed, full stretch, keeper no chance, Rovers back in front. I think that was his first touch as well, I think, that might use. Well, Gillespie and Curtis did well, Hughes just found a yard off Marcello, and that was enough. Great volley, yeah, tremendous volley again. So, everyone's happy again around Ewood now. But defending to be done, Clyburn almost got in there, Teller just let the ball run a moment. Short bailed him out, but only at the expense of a corner. Yeah, great ball again. See, that's what Clive is good at. He just, he just lazily comes into the game at periods, but he's very quick in the first five yards. Good defending again from Craig Short. Barcelona the corner, left hand side. In it goes, clear by Bjornaby. Gets height and distance on that. Back up towards halfway. Damien Duff down the right hand side, picks up only Hughes forward. Mark Hughes calling for the ball at the moment. Duff goes past the second man, at least he would have done if Puyol hadn't brought him down. Now, is that going to be a booking? I would have thought it would have to be. It's another Rovers substitution, Gary. Yeah, Craig Higgins is about to come on, but uh, I'm more interested in the second and what the referee's going to do, and I think Puyol will be booked for that challenge on Damien Duff. Now here comes Rovers substitution number four. It is uh, number five even. Here is Craig Hignett, and it's uh, Keith Gillespie is going off. Yeah, so he's another Rovers player. He's had a good afternoon. Well, Graham Sinner says so that period when he almost went to Wigan, and then Wigan decided that they didn't want him after yeah. all. Seem to provoke some sort of change to keep Gillespie. Well, it's just given him a new lease of life, hasn't he? And he's, he's got back in the frame now and he's, he's worked very hard again this afternoon. So Hignett on, Gillespie off. And the free kick is taken. It's cleared somehow outside the area. And we'll go for a Rovers corner. Duff takes it. Now he is done. Back to Duff again on the edge of the penalty area tried to back heel it I think and Barcelona have a game to save once more Bjornaby being held by Trashoras who without the risk of wanting to be libelled Stuart hasn't looked the most um, no, he's technically not a, gifted player he's so not, far he's not had a very good afternoon since he's come on so far he doesn't look a, a Barcelona type player. Marcello, nice ball out from the back, Trasaurus again, into Saviola. Fabio down the right hand side. Puyol outside him, Rovers have numbers back though. Back to Fabio it goes again, difficult one to control. Back to Kristen Ball on halfway. Koku, Reisiger, wide left, but he had no chance at all with that pass. But he will get a throw. Six minutes left. Rovers three, Barcelona two. Them Stolz in night had time on for quite a few stoppages in the second half. That was completely mishit there, but Puyol will pick it up. Poor pass, almost like Marcus bent back in. 
I'm not sure when the Spanish season starts, but there are one or two players looking a little bit weary out yeah, there. I don't, I don't think their season starts for another two, three weeks yet. Puyol does well, takes a pass two, tries to lay it up for, for Soros, but he took too long to actually shoot, and Alan Marne robbed him. Great tackle from Alan Marne there, because Koku has got a deadly left foot. That was a great challenge from Marne. But really, the shot should have been away before he got the challenge in. Yeah, he, looked, he looked very tired there, Koku, because he has worked very hard this afternoon. Fabio again. The game played in short to Saviola. He started up front and seems to have drifted into midfield. Hernandez telegraphed the pass though. Hughes turns, looks. So that's the played in short towards Marne again. No way forward for Curtis. Back to Friedel it goes. Five minutes left. Rovers three at Barcelona two. And a free kick to Barcelona for the challenge by Mark Hughes on Christenbaum which is taken from the wrong place. Looking back over the game, Stuart, who's impressed? Well, I think Craig Schultz had a very good afternoon in Edinburgh in the partnership early on. I mean, they, were, they looked a bit uh, depth of ideas the first 10 minutes, but as the game gone on, they've got a good understanding. And Damien Dove's had a tremendous afternoon for over. So you think maybe with the exception of Matt Janssen, the 11 we saw at the start is likely to be the 11 that Mark uh, I would have thought so. Yeah. Bent tricks his way around Marcello. Hughes peeling off towards the back post. Two in there. Duff. Duff and Hughes really almost in each other's way. The, the attempted shot went basically sideways across the edge of the penalty area. And Barcelona, who look a bit leg weary at the moment. Yeah, they look very tight now. Yeah. Clivert, to Gillespie, we've got to remember, of course, they played on Friday evening. Fabio, challenged by Bjornaby. Hernandez again. Challenge is flying in in midfield. Referee plays the advantage. Fabio tries to burst through and does gets a shot in. Oh, he should have done better. Yeah. He, he burst through the challenge from Bjornaby, and it was neither shot nor a cross in the end. No, really. He went for a shot, like, but it was a woeful shot. Really, should have passed it to Savioli. So three and a half minutes of normal time left. Rovers, of course, start at Derby next Saturday. Then a couple of home games: Manchester United and Spurs to come. And the reserves, would you believe, Stuart, start off on, I think, on Tuesday night at, away at Manchester City. But you've got to remember, of course, the important part about this season is because of the Intertoto Cup, the new season actually started before the last season finished. Yeah. I think eventually we'll probably get a winter break and probably no break at all in the summer. Free kick to Rovers. Dunn goes back to short. Marne. Kristen Val comes across. And Hughes putting himself about. Clear down the line, Fabio again. Hernandez gets a touch now. And Barcelona coming forward. Clive wanted it played early, so it's released to Saviola down the right hand side. He's got short in front of him, gets the ball across, and will settle for a corner. Yeah, just a quick injection of pace again. As soon as they get the ball from midfield, they attack very quickly. Two minutes left. Rain pours down at Ewood, as it has done all day. And uh, Fabio will take the Barcelona corner down the right-hand side. Christian Val goes forward. It's a deeper one, though. And referee's seen some pulling up inside the box. Cue ironic cheers. Free kick to Rovers. Now here's Marcus Bent. Brings it up towards halfway. Now Hignett, who's not really seen too much of the ball since he came on. Yeah, Duff yeah. free down the left, though. Defender tried to read it. Duff skips inside. Chances here, really. Nice ball through into Marcus Bent. Defender's back. Hughes. Flag stays down. And the fact the flag did go up eventually on the far side against Mark Hughes. Well, he didn't fancy a tap in, did he? he fancy another spectacular yeah, volley. Good football again from Damien Duff and Marcus Bent. And like it was a good ball from Bent. But uh, Damien Duff has been so much the key, hasn't he, to Rovers getting out from the back. Here's Clive inside the area, tries to hold it up, shows too much of it to Friedel. Rovers, I think, got a little bit lucky there because mm. uh, Clive was one-on-one -on -one with Short. He's had a very frustrating afternoon, Patrick Clive. You know, he, we haven't seen the best of Clive this afternoon. You know, whether he's thinking about the game on Wednesday, you know, he doesn't seem to be more trim. One minute left. Of normal time. 
Koku again in the Barcelona midfield. Ryan to go down the left hand side. Koku really had a bit of a cul de sac. Hernandez now. Barcelona still trying to play patient football. Trying to find Savio. The header out's not the best by a short, but the, the touch is poor. And um, Rovers should have it back again. Bjornaby up to Ben. Tried the back heel and gave it straight back again to Barcelona. Here's Fabio again down the right hand side. Skips past Ben. Gets the ball in towards the near post. The dummy there by Trashoras and Rovers living on the nerves a little bit here trying to give it away again here Savio inside the areas trying to keep his feet and then he chips it he chips it over the top and there was half a shout from a couple of players that Savio was being held but Rovers really the architects of what could have been their own downfall well, the, this Alan Hahn and uh, Craig Short both had chances to get rid of the ball there then and when Savio finally stood himself up I think he tried to chip free he did, yeah he did he looked up and saw Freeland and tried to chip him, but he well, went over the bar. Two minutes of time. Two Rovers are just going to keep on. it tight now. Because there's going to be games like this in the Premier League now where they'll be leading. They're just going to keep it tight now and just get the win, uh, come away with the win. Call me an old snick if you want. And it, whatever happened this afternoon, win, lose or draw, I'm not sure it tells you too much about the season. No, ahead. no, but it is a confidence booster playing a team like Barcelona. And Rovers, every team needs a good start, but yeah. when you've just been promoting, especially so. Well, they've had a good, good results so far in pre-season, except the Italian result, but this afternoon it's been a good win because Barcelona have tried. A lot of people will say, oh, Barcelona weren't interested in the game, but uh, watching the game this afternoon, they, they've given their all. We've already played a minute extra. Marcello goes up with a header. Back it goes from Puyol to Reiner. And uh, now that was a strange kick. Rovers with Bent midway inside the Barcelona half. Rovers really just need to keep it, but I think they're looking to come forward. Dunn gives possession away. Here's Puyol again. Dunn gets, gets it back again for Rovers. Bjorn a nice ball with the outside of his left foot. And uh, Damien Duff just couldn't quite keep it in play. Pick me uh, a Rovers player of the game then, Stuart. Well, oh, for me, it's got to be Damien Duff. Because he's excited the second half, he's put the fright, frighteners up Barcelona back for every time he's run at them, they've been a bit weary of him. He's made a goal and he's had a few good chances himself. But like, like we were saying before, he needs to sometimes have a go himself in front of goal. He should be getting more goals than what he does, Damien Duff. Well, we'll see if he gets a little bit more time in the Premiership than he did in the First Division. I don't think he will, Gary, because a lot of people know about him. So Hernandez, great shot, just outside the box, Friedel went down parried it wide yeah tremendous shot from Hernandez again he's, he's been Barcelona's best player good save from Fredo there because it was nice and low to his left well this could be our last chance of the game I reckon we played our two added minutes corner kick to Barcelona down the left hand side last chance to salvage a draw from this off the head of Patrick Clivert and off a Rovers player says the referee and Barcelona can line up another corner here. So this really will be uh, the last chance. Barcelona corner again, deeper one this time. Looking towards Savio, there's a bit of pushing, the ball's in the net. But uh, it was our friend Trashor, that's the guy who went up, and he's the one who's been penalised. Well, the referee's been spot on, he hasn't missed much really, and he said again there, shirt pulling again. Well, we played three minutes of time early on. I reckon that's got to be it. Forward by Bjornaby. That is it. It's full time and a morale boosting win against one of the giants of world football here at Ewell Park this afternoon. Philip Koku puts the vistas ahead. Gary Flickcroft made it 1 0. Nathan Blake 2 1. 2 2 with that Hernandez penalty. And then Mark Hughes against Barcelona, of course, made it Rovers 3, Barcelona 2.